Hey, this is Brendan Small from Galacticon, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, it's Joe from Loudwire, and I'm sitting next to Brendan Small, creator of Metalocalypse, Death Clock, and most recently, your new album. Galacticon, that's right. Galacticon 2. Become the Storm. That's right. So yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. It's, it's good to a, be back. It's, yeah, it's yeah. been about a year. Uh, it's been about since a year. You in. That's right, yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, you can check out the Loudwire podcast, which Brendan was on. We talked about a bunch of cool stuff, a bunch of not cool stuff that's going on, too. <laughs> um, but we're here to talk about something really cool, which is, of course, Become the Storm. We're not yes. going to just talk about Iron Maiden for a half hour. I know, though we could. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do, right? We wore the same shirt. I forgot my how backup shirt. Well, anyway, yeah. let's dive into this thing, man. Yeah. This has to be exciting for you because the first Galacticon album was a bit of a byproduct of not knowing what's going on with Death Clock and Metalocalypse and all that. And then this is yeah. your first one really kind of breaking free. I'd call this uh, more of like, a, just it's, it's a band name change more than leaving a band, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because I'm responsible for every note of this stuff, just like I am responsible and in charge of every single note for Death Clock. So, it's a different name. I don't have, I don't own the name, and I was ready to leave that project. We had, you know, a short amount of, of episodes I wanted to do, and I was like, we'll do them or we won't do them. Okay, we won't do them, then that's it. I was ready to, to move on anyway, and I didn't want to make Death Clock music forever. I think this is the fans kind of getting all riled up about Metalocalypse. That's kind of what inspired me to, to get into this, because I don't know that I need to make another record. You know what I mean? So you're saying this could be the last Galacticon? I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that every time, every time I finish a record, I go, that's it. <laughs> I'm finished. I've done it. I've done it again. It's a lot of work. I'm glad I did it. I like the way it turned out. But every, every once in a while, I don't even think about the next record. One thing that yeah. is obviously being conveyed is the huge cinematic nature of this. You've got this giant wall of sound, kind of like Devin Townsend, like production going on here. Right, that's interesting, yeah. So yeah. Um, what's important for you as far as the creative process in the production end? Because it seems like with something like this, the production almost is as important as the music. It is. I think the arrangement is more of what, I'm, what I think about. Because I like to layer like crazy. Um, it's the first thing I learned how to do when I got a tape recorder is to layer guitars, to harmonize with myself, to layer Doing vocals. all the loops and everything. Yeah, to have a big grandiose god chorus or something that's mm -hmm. like that you would hear in, you know, uh, the, but I think about the 70s. I'm not thinking about any modern metal when I'm doing this. I'm thinking about sure. stuff that like Roy Thomas Baker would do with Queen. I'm thinking about ELO. I'm thinking about like, you know, Jeff Lynne and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I knew I wanted it to sound like modern metal, but I knew that if I, you know, if I took all these ideas and put them in the same place, it's going to end up sounding like me. It's going to end up mm -hmm. sounding like something I would do. You're doing so many different voices on this album. Yeah. So it's still like kind of you being a creative guy developing these characters yeah. like we've seen you do with before and even before Metalocalypse with home movies. Sure. And yeah. just coming from that world, I think you're in an incredibly unique position compared to a lot of other musicians because you do come from that kind of like television realm of creating mm -hmm. a series. So what is it like when you're trying to play around with different voices. Did it take you a while to kind of find exactly which nuance and type of voice you wanted to use? Yes. The answer is yes. That's the, that's the longest thing. I mean, everything else was pretty quick making this record. The thing that took me a long time, and the thing I wanted to make sure I had a long time for, were, were, were vocals. With vocals, I have to like learn how to sing every single song. So every one of these songs I experimented with. I experimented with melodic vocals. I experimented with vocoders. I experimented with brutal voices that mm -hmm. you know you may recognize from Death Clock sounds, and I kind of put them all end to end, and I thought which sounds best on each song. Some of these will sound better with a more aggressive, brutal voice, like even more of a high pitched screamy voice. Some of them can be like a lower guttural voice. There's a song called "To Kill a God" on this. That's which one of my like, favorites. Yeah, I think it's like it's an interesting thing that I. It's a big kind of huge. It's an important part of the story, and. Um, and uh, it's very brutal sounding, and then there are lots of crazy different just ear candy moments, cool production things that I got to do. It's I'll tell you bit. another thing that happened on this record that I didn't ever do before. I hadn't, I hadn't really, you won't believe it, but throughout Metalocalypse, I didn't smoke pot or anything. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't high mm -hmm. when I wrote any of that stuff, and I can't write high, and I can't do any of that stuff. Not one of those guys. No, but recently, I've become very, very excited about marijuana. <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't know if it's because of the political climate or what, but I get really high now. 
before I go to bed, mm -hmm. and, and or, you know, whatever. I get high. It's medical. I got a card for it. Uh, it's it's medical. It's you don't need to explain it's it. It's required for my medical uh, condition, which is not being high enough. And um, <laughs> But this is the first time I mixed a record while I was high. And I swear mm. to God, headphones, this record and headphones, you're going to hear like just fucking cool shit splashing around. I was talking to um, Flying Lotus. Do you know who he is? He's a... Yeah. yeah. He, I let him listen to the record, and he goes, you mixed this, and he said, he had a term for it, he said, you mixed it with high ears, and I was like, okay, that's Actually, what I did, yeah. and yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I did. I go, now check this out, and check out how this is going to evolve over to there, and it's going to get it all phased out, and wonky, and strange, and all, so that, and that's another thing from the 70s that I love, is they would take a, the extra time to do cool mixing stereo tricks. And that's so, when an album's really complete, yeah, is when the production doubt, has yeah. all those little nuances. I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes a bass guitar drums live, it will sound really cool, everyone's playing together, it sounds great, but I love studio albums, and this was my hardcore, just all bets are off, studio record. Thank <laughs> you.